On the 5th of June last year, I flew from Paris to Shanghai. I was supposed to do 8 amusement parks, but in the end, I only did 4 of these. Here is the story of how my first ever trip to China went wrong. Shortly after landing, I withdrew money at the nearest ATM. China rarely accepts card payments, most stores only accept either cash or mobile pay. Recently though, the biggest apps WeChat Pay and Alipay started to allow foreigners to pay using their international bank accounts. So for future trips, you may not have to withdraw that much cash after all. With those basic necessities taken care of, I took the shiny maglev train from the airport on my way to the hotel. This magnetic power train is a fancy way to reach the city. It goes to speed up to over 400 km per hour. Shanghai's public tram station is quite efficient and has an extensive network. Conveniently, the signs and directions in the metro are also written in English. I think the signs could be written a little larger, but it still tremendously helps getting around. As such, reaching the first park of my trip, Happy Valley Shanghai, was pretty straightforward for me. Go to Shishan Station on Line 9, then take the 5 minute bus shuttle to the park. While you wait at the shuttle station, there will be taxi touts. Do not take them though, as they will price you an upcharge and the shuttle is free. I visited Happy Valley Shanghai on a public holiday. Thus, the park was really crowded, resulting in long lines. However, this also meant all the coasters were open. This place is known for shutting down rides for unscheduled maintenance, so I consider myself pretty lucky. I started a day with a ride on Fireball, my first coaster in China and also the first ever wooden coaster in China. This large gravity group was a little bit rougher than I would like, but I nonetheless enjoyed the airtime fill layout. The long stretch back to the station particularly offers a thrilling sequence of fast bunny hops coupled with scary head choppers. With my friend, we moved across the park in a clockwise direction. The second ride of my day was a rare iteration of the B&M family inverted coaster. Only two of these exist, and this is the original one. The tame forces feel similar to what you would have on a regular family coaster, but upgraded with the smooth track and comfortable restraints typical of B&M. I had high expectations for Megalite. I rode the Mac version, Alpana Blitz at Negland back in France, and I hoped the intimate layout would prove more intense and thrilling. And it was, for the most part. Nevertheless, I think some elements are a little disappointing, like the drop, something I explained in depth in my video review of the ride. It was then time for me to experience my first Golden Horse coasters. The spinning wild mouse and the kitty cred are side by side and they are not particularly memorable. I don't feel the quality and smoothness is that much different from your average fairground coaster. This zone with the Golden Horse coasters is the least appealing area of this park which is otherwise fairly gorgeous. The quality of the scenery honestly surprised me. I was expecting something cheap, similar to my experiences at various Six Flags, but some zones are pleasant to soar by. The rock arch leading to the Megalite, in particular, caught my attention. Happy Valley has also one of the only intermin mine trains. This one is a clone of Ulven at Bakken in Denmark. It has a pretty steep drop, which makes for a great start for this type of ride. I think the layout has a lot of fun twists and turns, but feels a tad slow to be truly exciting, in my opinion. Ride operations in China have terrible reputation for being sluggish. During my time at Happy Valley Shanghai, it was definitely the case. 
diving coaster provided the most frustrating display. The ride dispatched a single train every 10 minutes. I ended up waiting more than 2 hours in a line lacking scenery or anything interesting to watch most of the time. The coaster itself is really exciting though. It is a clone of Chakra and it has the original B&M over the shoulder restraints and those allow you to fully enjoy the vertical drops. The fitting location next to the leg adds to the spectacular ride experience. And that's already all the rides I did at Happy Valley Shanghai. I spent the rest of my day re-riding Megalite and filming around the park. Actually, I did go on the flying island to get real shots of the park too. There are several three rides I wish I could have done, especially the giant discovery, but the very long lines gave me cold feet. Overall, the park has a very solid line up, with three main thrilling coasters and a couple of decent supporting rides. Generally, the zones look present. It's a shame the slow operations prevent you from having a better experience. But that was something I anticipated. In the end, I still enjoyed my day at Happy Valley Shanghai. On my way back to the hotel, I realized something that would derail my entire trip, however. I lost my wallet and I couldn't find it back. My trip to China just went wrong. <laughs>